morning. What a beautiful day we've got here at Risebridge Farm. Just caught Jason having a little uh, snack, shoving a bit of potassium into him, a bit, a bit of banana. Um, yeah, so what's been going on? We've, we've been, Jason's been ripping through the horses in the morning, so we just sort of get distracted in the afternoon watching the Olympics. <laughs> we're, we're, we're working. <laughs> On some admin. <laughs> yeah, we're doing lots of admin um, at the moment um, with one laptop with the Olympics on and one laptop not. Uh, yeah, we've got all our horses in and so we've just lined up to have their little time. Um, um, so just on the Olympics, um, obviously the dressage um, team did so well and um, Charlotte and then the eventing um, amazing it's such an exciting final but also Jason's compatriot Andrew Hoy 66 is he yeah 62 I think. 62 yeah. did, did he get silver did he yeah, silver. it's amazing you know it's just uh, just goes to show I'm thinking about retiring but he sort of might have given me a new lease of life old Andrew oh, he's got, got a good 20 years on you and you you um you knew him or your parents knew him or something growing up oh my goodness you really are shoveling the banana down sorry <laughs> i'm done now um yeah my um i think i don't know whether it was andrew i don't know whether it was andrew they do know one another because i think they they, used, they came from down around near june e which is about an hour and a half from tumut which is where i'm from and um yeah it was if when you when you're that close in Australia, you know, only an hour and a half away. <laughs> I mean, you know, you you just know people in the horse world, and I think they they did knock about. Dad, my dad used to jump a lot when he was a kid, and I think he um, he, he came across Andrew quite a bit, and, and my granddad as well. So yeah, we were yeah we we knew Andrew, and I've I've seen him since he's been over here, and and hasn't been for a few years. But uh, yeah, good luck to him. He's done so well and he just keeps, keeps on going. <laughs> um, and I always find it so amazing. Look, we've got lovely Nini here. So amazing that the horses fly out, um, compete and fly back without any sort of, um, mm -hmm. without missing a beat. Because we, we've imported horses from Australia and things and they take quite a long time to get over the flight. Yeah, we've, we've, had, a, we've had a few over from Australia. I mean, it is a long flight from Australia as well, but yeah, we'd be allowing, <laughs> we'd be allowing, you know, months probably before, and some horses we've had over haven't, haven't really come back to the way they were for, till the next season. So it's, it, you know, it's quite tough. We have had horses that have come off the plane bouncing around as well. So your yeah. little mare Muffet was, she's, yeah. she's So it must be just amazing management by all the team. Um, so today uh, we've got the young horses out here, they've just come back from Hacks, Tabby's going to um, sort them out, so we just Nancy up there. There's Bob who starred last week, Bob's going really well and uh, I know I'm not supposed to have favourites but this is my favourite at the moment, he's called Rufus, he's so gorgeous. Um, Jason doesn't have favourites but I, I have the odd favourite. <laughs> right, so what's, uh, what's the go with Nini? So today we're gonna Nini's Nini's oh, it's so sunny. Sorry, I'm trying to get you out of the sun. Hang on. So so Nini's a nice little pony actually. Um, has been out of work for a little while, and um, uh, her owner is just wanting to get that going, and also has some traffic issues. I've been out on the road and things, and actually. It's not just it's not cars and things like that. It's bigger stuff that that we're sort of going to investigate. But I'll do it the same way I do everything. You sort of familiarise yourself or your horse with the with the traffic. In this case, I've put a tractor in the school, and then uh, you know we sort of work through our little program, sort of following along, um, then getting the tractor to go round, all that sort of stuff, which will. We'll go through quickly just to give you some idea of, of what I do. And it is funny when you get a horse with serious phobias about things, it does take time. Yeah, it does take some time to to get them to build confidence because that's what you are doing. Um, horses that are not too worried, they're just unsure. 
you know, you can get those those horses used to things pretty quickly, you know, surprisingly within a few rides. But uh, horses that have properly worried, you're looking at building confidence, which, which can take months. So, um, cool. So, but it's always good to have a process because I find one of the problems when you're doing this is your horse gets a bit anxious, you tighten up, and <clears throat> neither of you are being positive or trying to, you know, progress the situation. So that's why I have these little processes. Cool. Yeah, okay, down, we'll, um, we'll come and follow you down. So, Nini's doing well on the grass. Um, so she's a little, she's a young, well, she's probably about 14 hands, um, Dun Connemara. So, um, very popular breed and popular colour, I have to say. And she's a, she's a really smart pony. But I think the owner has had like a couple of quite bad experiences out hacking and um, yeah. So it's absolutely beautiful day today, although it has just been shocking weather. We are in, um, we're in a sort of race with the weather at the moment because um, half our hay well, our hay fields have been cut and they've just been lying on the ground getting soaking wet and it's slightly depressing watching thousands of pounds worth of um, haylage lying there whilst it it tips with rain so um, it's um, you know things going to be quite tight this winter um, around here because um, I know everyone's in the same boat making hay and haylage so um, Sandra, what's that noise? I don't know. Someone whinnying? <laughs> so, Nini is um, going around the arena and look here, we've got the tractor parked. Dave's in the tractor, ready for action. Um, but it's just there on its own and um, Jason just giving Nini a little warm up. Um, he has literally just got back from a ride on the other youngsters. And you can see when she's coming round to, towards the tractor, she's really starting to sort of look at it and thinking, hmm, what's that? So he's doing sort of one rain circles and that will go towards managing the situation. <laughs> and he's just, just testing her out a little bit and just seeing what her reaction is. And you can see she's a little bit worried as she goes past the tractor. And that's with no engine on or anything like that. As he said, just um, at the beginning, she's actually been good out hacking with cyclists, with cars and small vans and things like that. I, I, I really think this mare, she's going to be great with a, just with a bit of riding and stuff. There's nothing really too dramatic. But just, just so you know what I was doing there, I did a little bit of this yesterday. I've just created a gap, which is... I think achievable for her. If she was more worried, I would have created a bigger gap. Just to give me something to aim at. So I'm not going up to the tractor just at the moment. I'm just um, getting her to go by the tractor. Now yesterday when I went to ride out and the tractor was out on the drive, she kept on pushing her on the on the on the part of the circle that was the furthest on her as I came. And I'm just releasing really and just releasing her as I came towards it. So those little circles there, they I had more intent as she was coming away from the tractor and I just guided her as, as she came to. And you can see she chose after a while to go past the tractor. Whereas when I first came in, she was choosing to want to go away from the tractor. So I'll do that a couple of times then, and then we'll start the tractor and um, see if we can get her going past Because if you think of traffic on the road, that's what we need to do. We need our horses to see a gap and want to go forward past it. It's when they think, I can't do it, is where it all can get a little bit tricky. So. Okay, so at the moment, the, the tractor, the engine's off. So, and that's what Jason was talking about, processes. So he'll just start the, the same and she's just trotted it straight past. She hasn't bunched up this time, like the first time she went past it. She sort of scooted past a little bit, so that was much better. 
and then he'll probably come back up the other way. Got a little bit rushy, but nothing too, nothing too bad. So Jason's worked with horses with traffic issues who, who have actually been in um, accidents and things like that and have actually had real trauma. Whereas um, this pony, the owner just said, there's no rhyme or reason, nothing's happened. She just, you know, almost was born with this sort of fear of these bigger, bigger vehicles. Um, right, it's just going to do this one, one more time. Now, it might all be very different once the engine's going. So Jason has a sort of little process for all of these things. He'll start by warming up a bit like this and, oh, actually, yeah, he can tell you. Yeah. So j just then I had to do a couple of circles over there because as I went to circle back around the bottom side, I could feel she was hanging away. So I just did a couple of circles and then showed her, listen, that gap is still there. She's starting to get that now. So what I might do is I might do a little bit of following the tractor just as the next phase. And then I might come back to this and just go past it a couple more times. Okay, so when that's what I was just about to. Um, oh, hang on. Let's get him back in focus. So that's what I was about to say. His sort of first process um, is a follow. So um, if you think about horses being um, prey animals, you don't want to introduce traffic. Um, when it's coming towards the horse because it is like a, pre a predator. Whereas here, I hope you can still see me here because she's following the tractor, <clears throat> it becomes less um, like prey or something to be scared of. And she's actually almost becoming the predator and the tractor's the prey. She, she's actually sort of chasing the tractor away. And so it takes that element of um, worry out and she can see the tractor the whole time. She can see it's moving away. And actually she's being really good. Within the, <clears throat> within the Your Horsemanship program, we've got like his whole traffic training sort of program, but with a cyclist. So I know those silent cyclists are um, can be really really scary for horses so whatever vehicle it is be it a cyclist or a tractor or whatever it'll be the same and like Dave is just increasing the pressure here by um, moving the um, what you call it the, the spikes <laughs> I'm a farmer's daughter I should know these terms and um, yeah, she's coping with that really, really well. I think that's what, what you call a good result for the first stage. Yeah. Like I say, I, I, you can feel that if that tractor was coming towards me and Dave moved the bucket the way he is, yeah, she'd be very worried. But then if you think about it, most horses would be. But this, the idea of building confidence is that if something is moving away from a horse while you're, while you're exposing it, then, you know, they're going to be um, looking at it less as, a, less as a predator and more as a prey animal. So now he's, got, he's just going to leave the tractor idling and I'll just try the same exercise that I was doing before and then I'll revisit it. And then I might just go for a little ride and do so, something a little bit more low key. Okay, so we'll just watch him do um, do this next little bit. And because Nini is actually with us for quite a while for this, um, he can really take his time with it. Just do these couple of stages. Um, so the pressure has been increased because David has kept the engine going this time. The gap is actually a lot smaller too. And so here, he's pushing her when she turns away and wants to go away, he's pushing her. When she's facing the tractor and going forward, he just lets her idle. So she 
thinks that actually going forward is a lot nicer than going away from the tractor. So it's making her work hard when she's going away from the tractor and releasing that when she's going towards the tractor. So it's all really simple, basic um, sort of psychology really, um, which a lot of horse training is. They're just giving a little taps uh, when she's going away from the tractor. And then he's never ever going to kick her or, or tap her on the shoulder when she's going towards the tractor. She has to make up her own mind to go past. So he's, he's working her and giving her a tap when she's coming away from the tractor. So that becomes less attractive option. When she's going forward, he takes every bit of pressure off and you can see she was brave, scooted past a bit, but nothing too dramatic. And he'll just repeat that process until she's going past it with no worries. So it's really important if a horse is um, scared of something, you should never kick or hit them or whatever. You should never ask them over it because you're actually just increasing their fear of it, increasing the adrenaline. Well, it's, it's not quite as black no. and white as that. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're right, you, you know, if you get cranky with a horse because they're spooked or something, then a horse can associate that spook with you getting cranky. So you have to be a little careful of that. The, my approach just here, and like I say, there's a number of different ways to approach it, but yesterday I taught Nini about, she had to work out what I meant, you know, in terms of this, when I push here, look for another option. They don't just sort of get it straight away, but I would call this a more indirect approach to getting a horse to go forward. Um, and what you were talking about, Penny, was more of a direct approach where you've just got to keep enough energy in and reward a forward step, okay? And, and it's, but when I say direct, you give them a tap and they get a release when they step forward. And that's, that's direct, this is quite indirect and in that I'm pushing when they're away and releasing when I'm... I do, I, yeah, I did explain what you were doing with the circles. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> Yeah. So he was just saying the two different approaches. This one, you're actually letting the horse choose the option. So slightly less direct. The other option is to go towards it, let them look, keep asking them, pass. Okay, so that only required a couple of circles this time and actually a little jig jog. And you might not have seen it, but she just turned her head to actually really look at it. And um, it was almost like, actually, I'm gonna check that tractor out a bit, rather than that sort of almost the equivalent of the humans just shutting their eyes and just getting past it as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, so she was, she was doing the right thing there and then sort of balked at the last minute. And I think that's probably what she does with the owner a little bit in that, that little stop and spin. Yeah, so I think Jason will just continue to work like that for a bit and then, then yeah, take her off. You can see going through this way the second time through, massive improvement. Coming back, you know, something else is catching her eye and she's a bit more worried. So I'll just go through the same process a few times till I get an improvement, follow the tractor a little bit more, and then I'll sort of advance onto some other ideas as she starts to become more comfortable. So yeah, there it is, just working, working through, you know, and it's just teaching, that's what it is. You know, she's just not sure, so I'm just trying to show her that it's all right. Oh, lovely Nini. Okay, guys, well, <clears throat> we'll leave Jason and Nini there for, for a bit and um, yeah, check in next week. I think um, all the young horses are sort of close to the finish of their programs. So um, yeah, next week will be sort of handover week for uh, six of them. So six youngsters going home. There they are up there, either coming back from their ride or just about to go for their ride and um, yeah we'll just watch her through one last time 
as I wander back to my office and back to doing some work or watching the Olympics, one of the two. <laughs> yeah, so pushing her away from the tractor, letting her go forward past the tractor. So putting pressure on when she's going away, taking it off when she's going forward. And another little rush. But she does come back. She's not like rushing and tearing off into the distance, so. Hopefully it won't be too, too, uh, too tricky to fix. All right, guys, good to see you all and we'll see you next week. All right, bye.